new covenant with, with Christ. We're under the seven major covenant that God cut with mankind. The last one being with Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he shed his blood. He was the perfect Lamb of God who took away all the sins of the world, past, tense, present, and future. Amen. Amen. But it talks about the earthly sanctuary in chapter 9. And I'm going to open up. And I'm going to read a lot this morning because I, I want you to get it. I want you to understand the difference between the, the two. If we have the old and we have the new. Amen? Amen. The, the old, it goes on explaining. It said, then, indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances or divine services in earthly sanctuary. For the tabernacle was prepared the first part, was the lampstand, the table, the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which has the golden session and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which the golden pot had been like had the manna, and his rod was there that budded in the tables of the covenant, which is the Ten Commandments. And above all was the, the, the cherubims, the glory overshadowed the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot we cannot speak in detail. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services, and into the second part the high priest only was allowed once a year, not without blood, which he offered for, for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicated this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. Very important statement. It was symbolic of the present time in which both the gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot be made to perform the service of uh, perfect in regard to the conscience. Catch the word conscience there. To the conscience, concerning only with foods and drinks, various washings, especially ordinances imposed until the time of Reformation. Now, he begins to switch to the New Testament. Paul begins to the switch in the New Testament begins to explain what happened when Jesus came. He said, but when Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not uh, of this creation, nor with the blood of goats and cows, but with the, his own blood, he entered in to the most holy place once Amen. and for all. Having obtained eternal redemption. Having obtained eternal redemption, for the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified for the purity of the flesh, how much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offer himself without spot to God, and listen to what it says, cleanse your conscience. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve, to serve, to serve the living God. Oh yeah. In Hebrews nine, chapter fourteen, chap, um, verse fourteen, I just read. Okay, verse fifteen. He said, "This reason he's the of the new covenant by means of death, of the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, and those who call many receive the promise of the eternal inheritance." But I want you to catch the word conscience. Catch the word conscience. The blood of Jesus washes your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. Listen, I began I began to, to say that a couple of years back. I say it every morning in my morning devotion. I say that. It's been making a difference in my conscience. I'd like to have a clean conscience, a clear Amen. conscience. Amen. It's possible. It's possible. Well, it tells us that your conscience is not clean. It's, it's not clean unless it's cleansed by the blood of Jesus. The only thing you can clean your conscience is the blood. Amen. Amen. If you try to work and work without without faith to please God, faith, uh, faith without works is dead. It doesn't produce anything. You have to have faith in and 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 the works that comes along with it is 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 part of that which you which you want to be in, which you want to have in your life. Because faith and works with, with, with it is as part of that that we do. And Hebrews eleven six says that without faith it's impossible to please God. So we want to please God, right? Amen. Amen. That should be our goal. But your conscience is the opposing voice in your head. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Your, your conscience is the opposing voice 
in your head. It all it always oppose what God wants it to do. Amen. That's why you're not to be led by your conscience. What do you do when you get in crisis mode? You go to questions. Do you go to the throne or do you go to the Word? Do you go to the Word? Do you go to the phone? You start. You start. You're con letting your conscience run off, and you begin to think things. Oh, what if that happened? What's this happen? What if? What if? What if? What if it's, it's worse than I think it's going to happen? And, and, and your conscience is just it just run it just run amok on you, and you won't be stable. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But it's it's opposing a voice in your head against the word of God. Your conscience, which is trying to direct you into the works that are unfruitful and dead. Your conscience will always try to lead you in a place of unfruitfulness and, and a dead works in your own on your own life. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 14 10 says there are many voices in the world. Paul says there's many voices in the world. We, you know, we have the voice of the end, we have the we, we have people speaking to us and all that stuff. We have many voices that speak in the, into our life. But number one, Hebrews 9, 14 says, God never intended you to live by your conscience or by his voice. Big statement, by his voice. The sheep hear the shepherd's voice. When we get into situations, we need to say, Lord, I'm a sheep, you're the shepherd, and I need to hear from you. Amen? And start telling God that. You're no good, you know, that your conscience will tell you you're no, you're no good, you never amount to anything, or you call you so, call you a so-called Christian, look at your life, it's a mess. Your conscience in it, and the devil will use your conscience. The devil will listen to what comes out of your mouth. If he, if you keep being negative, guess what he's going to do? He, he can't read your mind, but God can. I said, the devil cannot read your mind, but God can. All the devil has to do is listen to what comes out of your mouth. Is it positive or is it negative? If it's negative, he, he goes, hmm, I'm getting something. He'll send another demon to, to come against you. Whisper some more lies your in your conscience. He, he whispers those lies in your conscience, and it becomes part of it. What, is, what are we talking about? What are we talking about when we're talking about um, your conscience? What is that? What do you mean by conscience? Your conscience is hu your human psyche. That it, it, it induces mental anguish, and it's a feeling of guilt. When we feel guilt, we feel we, our conscience is trying uh, to, to give us guilt. How I many know there's no condemnation with those in Christ? Let me ask you a question. When you when you do something wrong and you repent, and you really repent from your heart, and you ask God to forgive you, yes. your sins are washed in the blood, and Jesus remembers no more, as far as the east is the west, what does your conscience do? Does it not still convict you? Still, is it, it, it condemns you, doesn't convict you. The Word of God is what it convicts. Yeah. Jesus pulls you to the side and says, hey, what are you doing? Get back under the blood. But your conscience, uh, 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 this is where you get condemnation. You, you have condemnation in your life. And you never get rid of it because you're still thinking about what you did. Instead of accepting the blood, what the blood has done. Cleanse your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. And it's important that you understand between the two because your conscience will lie to you and will keep you, keep you condemned in the midst of your life. It's a bad place to be. Your conscience is the feelings of, of, of pleasure as well, or, or well-being, or actions, thoughts, and words are in conformity to the value system that you have. Your conscience is, is, is going to work with what you put in it. Amen. You, if you put the Word of God in your in your heart, put the Word of God in, in, in your spirit, man, and your spirit, man, is going to override your conscience every time. Amen. But if you're running on your conscience, it's dead work. You're not, you're not, you're not going to stand in the midst of the storms of life. The Greek word means moral awareness. Are you, this is where you get your moral awareness, your, your, your moral consciousness. Paul refers several times in his own conscience being good and clean and clear and clean and clear, and I want to show that to you, he, 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 his conscience verified the in, integrity of his heart. If you would turn to Acts 23. Acts 20, we'll go, go back to Acts again. Acts 23 talks about that in several places, but I want you to say it for yourself this morning. How did you go walk in a, in, a, in a place with God where your conscience is clean, amen? 
but you're not feeling condemned. You're not feeling down and out all the time. Your conscience is condemning you. But uh, chapter 23, verse 1, this is Paul the Apostle who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. You know, he struggled with, with things in his own life as, as well, but it's through all that. You know, he spent three three years with, on, the, on the Raven Desert with Jesus. And Jesus began to download in him before he ever got into ministry. After he got saved, he took him out and, and to the uh, uh, Arabian Desert and began to teach him, began to download him, because he was called to the Gentile church. To, to, to pin these things on the anointing of the Spirit of God. And this is what he says in verse 23, verse 1. And then Paul looked earnestly at the council and said, Man and brethren, I have lived in, in all good conscience before God and until this day. How would like you like to live that way? And your conscience is clear. You and God's good. Amen. And you're good with other people. That's, your, that's a good place to be. That's where God wants you to be. He said, I have a clear conscience, a clean conscience. You're not picking up offenses. You're not, you're not throwing out offenses to, to somebody. Uh, go to, let's see, where am I at? Acts 24. There's another reference. Acts 24, verse um, 15. says this, I have hope in God, which themselves also himself, that there will be a resurrection from the dead, both of the just and the unjust, and then he goes in verse 16, this being so, I myself always strive, and that's the key. I always strive to how a conscience without offense toward God and man. There it is. I always strive. Be a peacemaker. Learn how to be a peacemaker. Listen, if you be a peacemaker, you'll be called the sons of God. Peacemaker. And it's important that you get beyond where you're at because, because your conscience are condemning you. Conviction's a good thing. It draws you close to God, right? Number, uh, let's see. Okay, he was uh, Let's see. Okay. Ah, how do you, I'm okay. Yeah. God never intended for you to live by your conscience, but by his voice. And, and that began at the very beginning in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. There was an that his intention from the very uh, get go, from the very get beginning, is to hear his voice. When he created, when he created Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden. He told them they could eat of every tree in the garden, including the tree of life, except one. Which one? The tree of knowledge. What? Good, Good and evil. That's one. That's one. Because he didn't want to run on their conscience. Amen. Amen. What happened when they ate? It, they, they, they knew good and evil. Amen. So number two, God told them that they could eat of every tree, including the tree of life, but not the tree of, of, of good and evil. Now, it's our choice. We have to come to, to the place where we understand that the, the, the word for the tree is our conscience, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The choice between Adam and Eve was not with was not between good and evil, but between life and death. Between life and death. That's what happened. Did they not die spiritually? They did. I mean, they got kicked out of the garden. And they wasn't the same anymore. And matter of fact, Adam was hiding. In the cool of the afternoon, God would come down and, and talk to him every day. Commune with him. But, and, and they come down and said, You know, Adam, where are you? Well, he knew where Adam was. He saw what happened. He knew what was going to happen. Amen. God always knew the end before the beginning. But he was teaching them how to operate in the kingdom of God. Amen? And because of that, he, he, he sacrificed the first animal, you know, shed the blood and made atonement for their sins. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, he, he begins to talk about life and death. Chapter 30, uh, verse 11. He's talking about that I'd rather you choose life and not die, but he begins to unfold to us the, the necessity to, to, to seek after God with our whole heart and, and also his word. That's why God gave us this. It's not just another book, but it's his word. It's his written word. It's a Logos word. And we can rest assured it's true. Amen? Verse 30, uh, chapter 30, verse 11, said, For this commandment, which I command you today is not too mysterious for you. 
It's not too mysterious for you. It's not far off. God didn't make it hard. God made it for the simple-minded people as well as those who, who have a complicated mind. He made it from the, the least to the, to the greatest. Is, not, is it not in heaven that you should say who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Tell them about the word. Nor is it behind the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it, it, it to us that you may hear it and do it. But the word, if I say but the word. The word. Word. It's very near you, very near in, your you. Mouth, in your mouth, and in your heart, that you may do it. That's why we need to hide the word in our heart. Amen? We hide the word in our heart, we might not sin against God. See that I have said before you today what? Life and good, death and evil. Two different things, two opposite opposing things. And in that command, and I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go, you go to possess. You know, I still hold truth today. God still wants to bless you. Everything you do wants to bless your home, bless your family. Amen? Amen. But, it's always a but in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but here comes here comes the seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. But if your heart turns away that you do not hear, that you do not hear, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you should surely perish. You should not prolong your days in the land which cross over the Jordan and go into to possess it. I call heaven and earth as a witness to you against you today that I've said before you what? Life and death. You choose life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, and this is God's heart, choose life. I want you to choose life. I have a life for you. That's why Jesus says I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. I, I have a plan and a purpose for your life. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is accept it for what it, what it is, what, what my word says. Don't let your conscience condemn you. Don't let your con. Listen, your conscience will condemn you and tell you other things that you, you know, that you, and you, and you run on the conscience and it's, it's devastating. It'll, it'll, it'll bring you to the place of brokenness. And that both you and your sinners may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice. That you, there it is, that you may obey, obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and to give them. It's important that we come to that place that we understand. Even in the very beginning, the number three, the choice, the choices was between Adam and Eve was between life and death, good and evil that they had a choice to make. God gives us a conscience to convict us so that we can come to Christ and follow him. They convict us so that we can come to Christ and follow him. But once you come to Christ, here's the key. He doesn't want you to live by your own conscience. He doesn't want you to live by your own conscience. Your conscience will condemn you. Your conscience is unfruitful. Amen? Amen. Or your own knowledge, or even your own knowledge, amen? Your know, knowledge is puffed up. The Bible talks about knowledge, your own knowledge. Our knowledge of the world is puffed up. It's prideful. But the knowledge that we want is the knowledge of God, is it not? We, yeah. want, to, we want to get to know God better. And that's why he gives us his word. They only lead to death. Your conscience, um, his voice leads to life. Your conscience leads to death, his, to, to death. His voice leads to life. Number four, God wants to live by His voice. God wants, uh, God want, God wants is to live by His voice. Amen. Amen. As He did with Adam and Eve. Listen, if you live by your conscience, you're living by the tree of death. Is that making sense? What I'm telling you? Does that make sense? 
You ever wonder why you keep thinking the same thing over and over? Even after you truly repented and you start bearing fruits of repentance. You know, fruits is a repentance turning from that, what you're doing, and quit doing it anymore. Amen? But even, even at that, your conscience will condemn you. Because it always brings up the past. It always brings up the things that you did in the past. But you need to come to the place where you where you're put your conscience under the blood of Christ. Amen? There's no more condemnation for those in Christ. Romans chapter 8. There's no more, there's no more condemnation that, that those who are in Christ who what what? After the spirit, not the flesh. And part of your conscience is, is, is connected to your flesh. Amen? But your true nature is your spirit. And we, we have to take authority over that. We have to bring those thoughts in captivity, obedience in Christ, and say, that's enough. <laughs> my, my conscience has been clean from dead works to serve a living God. Begin to quote that. It is written. It is written. Take the word of God. The will the sword of the spirit and begin to speak it over yourself. Mm -hmm. And over your mind, I'm telling you, it's freedom in it. I've been doing it for a while now. I do it every morning. My devotion, I claim that. I claim the mind of Christ, too. I mean, I want to think like Jesus. I want to think Amen. like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Amen. I want to think like Jesus. But i got to do my part. i got to take the word, and I, I've got to get it from, from, from right here, off this book, into here. And then, and then, then it's in my spirit, man. My spirit begins. Everything flows out of here, even to your conscience. The way God speaks, first they hear. He speaks to your spirit, man. By the spirit. And then it, then it comes up to your head, to your conscience. Amen? That's the way it works. It's, we, we, we won't try to do it the other way around. You know? And it don't work. It gets all confused. I mean, like God's not the author of confusion. The devil is. And we have to come to that place where you begin to seek to hear God's voice and follow it. You begin to seek and hear God's voice in the following. And like I said, the, the number one way that God speaks is His Word. Stay in His Word. Meditate on it. Hide it away in your heart. Give the Holy Spirit something to work with. The Holy Spirit, He resides in your spirit, man. If you hide the Word of God in your heart, and your, your spirit is nurtured, your spirit begins to grow, and the Holy Spirit will you know, bring back to your remembrance. If you give in a different situation, you know, it might, it might be financial. Well, you, you know, you don't know what to do. What's the Holy Spirit going to tell you? He's going to take you right back to the Word of God what to do to get out of that situation. Every time. And, and all you have to do is be obedient. Don't question it. Because <laughs> your conscience goes, well, you know, if I did, if I did that, if I did that, well, I, I'm going down. You know? That's what your conscience will tell you. I ain't going to make it. But no, you stay on God's Word and you do it. Out of obedience to God. Listen, God's a whole lot bigger. God owns all the gold and the silver and the taters in the ground. Amen? Praise God. And so you have to come to that place where you just believe and do it. And trust it. It's all about trust. Amen? It might look like you're going under. I know God's never too late. It yeah, might look like you're going under. Your back might be against the wall. Huh? I've been there many times. I said, man, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm sure testimony after testimony. You know? Everybody's got a testimony. Can teach you to give your testimony. I encourage you to give your testimony. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of your testimony. If you're not testifying what God is doing, you're not going to be an overcomer. It's, it's that simple. Because that's what it says. Jesus has done his part already. Are you doing your part? Are you telling people about the goodness of God? To surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the rest of the days of life. Are you sharing with others here about, about how good God really is? Because we should. That's a clean conscience. That's a pure conscience. Give a praise to your God. That's what he wants you to do. Now, now the, the enemy is so more in your conscience, more and more and more, where you're getting so depressed, you're getting no oppressed, and then next thing you know, man, you're just, you just, you could barely, you know, keep your head above water. Not a good place to live. But if you found the tree of life that leads to abundance and joy far beyond what you could ever imagine. Listen, God says we live and we move and have our very being in Him. Think about that for a minute. We live and we move 
and have our very being in Jesus. That's a powerful statement, is it not? And we have to learn how to stay in Him. We have to learn how to stay in Him. Your identity is in Him. It's not in the world, it's not in your conscience, it's in Him. It's, it, it, we have to come to that place and begin to realize that we need to stay in Him. I got, I got three things right here. Um, Jesus is the Word, John 1, 1 says it, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. But if you're, number one, if you're not willing to read your Bible, and number two, if you're not willing to spend time in God's presence, and number three, if you're not willing to heed godly counsel, and number four, if you're not willing to wait on the peace of God to direct your thoughts, then you're probably not going to hear God's voice. You're probably not going to hear God's voice if you want to do your own thing. If you're trying to make things happen. And, and you can get you can get all kind of capital. Can't you? You use all kind of voices in the world. You can get somebody to agree with you, even if it's wrong. <laughs> but is that what God's saying? Is that what God's word says? That's the ultimate question. And we have to come to the place where we're being led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, and be bound by the Spirit, by the Spirit. And it's important that we come to that place to be able to hear God as His child, which is number five. But give you number four, God wants to live by His voice. And number five, as God's child, you're to hear Him as clearly as a pastor or a leader. A lot of times people think, well, oh, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no leader, I'm no pastor, I, I don't need to do all that. Well, yeah, you do. Yes, <laughs> me more so, That's even right. me more so. Is it something that I hear God speak to me every day? Well, it's not so much every day, but it's I stay in His Word. He's speaking to me when I when I read the Word, when I study. He's speaking to me. Amen. He's speaking to you this morning Amen. through His Word. Amen. That's Amen. His voice. Amen. That's recognizing who who He is. When you hear the Word of God coming forward, oh, it's God. it's God's voice. That's how you know it's God's voice. Because he's not going to tell you anything against his word. Amen. It's his voice. That's how you know you recognize it. Because the Holy Spirit of uh, 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 whispering in your ear, you know, in your heart. Hey, hey, what's the word of God says? It is written, Jimmy. What's it say? Man shall not live but bread alone, but every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. So what we have to do, it's our choice to follow. It's our choice to follow. The voice, amen, to follow his leading. Amen. The, the voice in our head, the voice of others. We do not agree with God's word, you're missing out. You don't want to listen to the voice in your head, amen, or the voice of others. Who, do, who doesn't agree with God, God's word? Listen, you know you're getting godly counsel, you know why? Because they're going to give you God's word. You call me, you want some counseling, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take you right back to what it says in here. Because my opinion doesn't mean anything. My advice doesn't mean anything. And I give, I might give you a little bit of advice, but it's going to be taken from the Word of God, I guarantee you. And I might share a testimony with you of what, what God did in certain areas that, that, he, that he did to me to help me get out of that. Amen? Amen. But it's always going to go back to the Word because that's the final, final say-so. That's, that's the only thing we've got to measure where our life's at. It's the Word of God. And it's important that we come to that place where we do that. Listen, hearing God is no longer a mystery to you. We just read that in wrong, did we not? It's not a big mystery. All you got to do is apply. All you got to do is listen. Ask God, Lord, I want to hear with the ears of my heart what you're saying. Let me know I'm, I'm going in the right direction. Let peace be the umpire. You'll know if you're going in the right direction because you'll have a peace about it. And you, and you need to work on the cleanse your, your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Lord, I, I apply the blood over my conscience every morning. This morning I'm waking up and I'm applying the blood over my conscience. What does it mean to apply the blood? It means to say that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, my conscience has been cleaned by the power, cleansed by the power of the blood from dead works to serve the living God. Quote that scripture I just read you. How to do it wrong. 
I mean, not Deuteronomy, but Hebrew. I do it every morning. And I'm telling you, it makes a difference in your life. Well, the devil will try to come on and come along and condemn what you're doing or what you're trying to do. It's not going to be dead works anymore. We try to do dead works to please God because our, we feel like our conscience is, is condemning us. Well, it does. But you still feel awful, don't you? Because <laughs> you never measure up. You'll never get there. <laughs> and it's just a cycle. But if you learn how to take the blood and apply it over your conscience, Lord, I want a I pure, con clean conscience every day, <laughs> then guess what? You're going to start thinking different. Your, all the things in your conscience are going to be pushed out the way. Get out the way. I ain't got time to mess with you. It's gone. What's the word of God say? And you run on that more so than you do the other. Yep. Amen? Amen? That's how it works. Is this helping anybody this morning? Amen. 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 Yes. It's awesome. Number five. But as a child, you hear him clearly. As a pastor and leader, it's important to understand. It's just not that God just does not speak to the pastors and leaders, even though he does. But he also speaks to you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to be part of your everyday life. All you got to do is invite him to be part of it. We try to do so much on our own. You know, God's, 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 he's interested in the little things as well as the big things of your life. You know, a lot of times I'll be out there working on, working on old cards and on what to do. So God give me a whiff. <laughs> I'm stumped. And next thing you know, I get, I get a, Boom. I get a thought. Boom. Oh. I remember, I remember one time when I was, when I was, I had my house in Angleton and we were adding to it, got uh, married. Joan and I got married and had only a two-bedroom house. And, and I, I said, you know, I had three kids, only had two bedrooms. So Danielle, well, she was real young, so we put her in the crib, put the boys in, in the bunk beds. It's the only way we could make it. She lost her child support and she was going under. So I said, well, we'd already planned on getting married. So I, I said, okay, let's just go ahead and get married, and, and that way y'all can move in. We'll work at it, work the details out. Amen? And God had a plan. And the boys, I told the boys, I said, okay, what we're going to do. I said, uh, we're going we're gonna to put y'all back in the bedroom with your, with your, with your baby, with your, your baby, uh, your, your uh, uh, not daughter. Sister. Sister, I guess. Right <laughs> anyway, uh, I said, I'm going to build y'all a tree house. I, I said, how tall y'all want? Well, the oldest one, Eddie, said 12 foot. I said, I said, whoa, I said, that's pretty high, 12 foot. So I went down to McCoy, we bought a bunch of material, bought some four by four posts, and we built the tree house, 12 foot high, <coughs> up in a tree along the fence line. Built it all and, and had, had had the screen on the windows. They could have ropes with pulleys and everything. Put carpet on the wall, carpet on, had them bunk beds in there, and, wow. and they had a stairway going up to it, and they, they lived there. That was their house. They lived and loved it. They would come in the, in the morning, be a storm out there, and the thing would be doing this. <laughs> and I didn't realize it. He goes, whoa, did you feel that storm last night? The whole tree house was <laughs> rocking. Oh, my God. Well, kill them. <laughs> but they loved it. They would come in the house. That's how I had to punish them. When they did something wrong, I said, get in the house. <laughs> Go get in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, I won't do it no more. They loved it. They stayed out there. They grabbed, even even the twelfth uh, twelfth grade. They were still living in the tree house. <laughs> it was funny, but they just they just that's that's what they got used to. And they'd get real mad when I sent their their sister out there. I said because because we have a date night. We had no money to go on a date, so date night was like go to the tree house. Your sister's gonna stay with y'all tonight. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it but it was just God in the midst of all that. But but I, I got to the point where I, was, I had to add on to the house. I'm getting to my point here because I'm well off track. But I, I had a, I had a another room. I was building another room on it, and, it, and the roof was a hip roof, and I had another roof there that I already put up with on a carport. So I'm trying to connect all this together. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. Well, I had some carpentry skills. I kind of knew what you got to do, and, and I just couldn't get it in my head. To do it right, and I, and I prayed one night. I said, I said "Father, I, I said, you're the, you're the, your son's a great carpenter, the greatest one that's ever, ever lived." I said, "Show me how to pop that roof out and attach it to this other roof so I can leave what I, I existing there and make it all work out." And all of a sudden, the next day, I woke up, boom, just had this 
You ever seen those those, those cartoons with a like little it. deal up here with a fish popped up and <laughs> like that? Like a like a light bulb come on? And I went, whoa. And I thought to myself, hey, that might work. <laughs> so I went, I got my tape, my ruler, and I started measuring. And sure enough, it, it worked out. God showed me how to do it. But it, but it, but it's his leading. That's what he wants you to do, is be led by his spirit to help you in anything you're wanting. And if we if we allow that, then it'll happen and, and you'll have a prosperous way in your life. Number six, do it. Just do it. Nike commercial. Just do it. Just start doing it. Start claiming God's promises. Amen. Every day. Just do it. Cleanse my conscience from dead work to serve the living God. Get in His Word, spend time in His presence, seek godly counsel. It's okay to seek godly counsel when you're struggling, amen? I, I, had, I used to have people, and I, I don't do it so much, but I, I got to where I leave my phone out here, and it calls me in the night, it might take me a while to get to it, but I'll get to it eventually. These people call me two, three o'clock in the morning. Need some godly counsel. Most of the time, they'd be drunk. <laughs> okay and, and it's just amazing that, that God used that and, you know we had, we had a friend of ours that, that I uh, had a bunch of treatment with and we started bringing him around us and he was still struggling with, with his addiction cycle and, and we would bring him over the house and minister to him and, and, and his name was Francis Francis was he was a trip let me tell you but, but, but God loved him amen God loved him enough to put him in my pile and after I sobered up, I began to work with him, and he started coming over. I began to minister with, with to him all the time. He still struggled, and I remember he got he got sick and was in the hospital one night. And he called me from Houston and said, "I'm sick. I, I think they have prostate cancer. Just really, just he lost his family." I told him. I kept telling him. I counseled him for a long time. I said, "Brother, if you don't straighten up, you're gonna lose." Your, your wife and your family. I told him straight up. And it happened just like I told him. And he was devastated, broken. And his health was bad. And one thing after another just kept happening. And he called me from Houston one night. He said, Jimmy, I, I, I need some prayer. I don't, even, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it to heaven or not. And I said, he said, man, I, I just, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And I said, well, let, well, let me pray for you, brother. And Joan and I, I remember we were laying in bed and we're, we're, we're holding hands as late at night. And that's back then when they didn't have the, the cell phones. They just had regular phones. And I was talking to them on the phone. And, and, and I started praying. And all of a sudden, the, the receiver on the other end, I heard it hit the floor. Like, boom. And I stopped. And I looked at Joan and said, I think he just got I don't know what happened. <laughs> I did. I said, I don't know what happened. You know, how you, yeah, you go, oh, what happened? God, what happened? And I kept saying, Francis, 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 you okay? You okay? And about two minutes went by, Francis, Francis. He finally picks up the phone. He says, Jim. I said, I said, praise God, you're still alive. He said, you ain't believe what I, what I just saw. He said, I saw you and Joan praying for me, holding hands. He said, uh -huh. He saw us praying. He says this. He said, but then I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. And he was carrying me on the beach. Uh -huh. Put Prince in the sand. Amen. I was in the bosom. Praise the Lord. He said, soon you're going to be with me. Soon, Praise the Father God. soon you're going to be with me. Soon. And I went, whoa. And it's just amazing what God can do in the midst of that. Amen. I just want to share and encourage you to do, don't give up on anybody. I want to give up on this guy. I'm glad I did it. God wouldn't let me give up. He was so screwed up. I said, God, I can't take it no more. I just about to pull my hair out. I ain't got nothing left. <laughs> he said, don't you give up. I ain't giving up. What are you giving up on him for? I, ain't get, I didn't tell you to give up. I told you to witness to him. Share the word to him. 
with him. And he's in heaven today. Amen. He called him. Amen. 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 Awesome. There was another time we called. He called about a month or so later. This time, I knew, I kind of expected what was going to happen. Well, he fell out of the spirit again. <laughs> Full on the phone. I'm, whoa. I just wanted to whoa. He's gone for, I don't know, two, three minutes. He, and, he, he's, and I was just laughing this time. He goes, Jimmy, Jimmy. I was, I was with the Lord again. And I was like, man, dude. <laughs> but God is so good, amen? Amen. amen. Listen, don't underestimate the power of God's right. word. As you speak it, as you pray it. God would do a mighty work in somebody's heart, man. And, and it, it all has to do with us lining ourselves up with his word. It, it's not difficult. It's not hard. But we have to do our part, amen? amen. amen. Let me bless you this morning. Hallelujah. I love this too. I, 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 I do this and I keep saying this and I don't I don't mean to be repetitious, I guess. But this is very important that you receive it. You know one of the things that the body of Christ hives against it? They don't know how to receive. Most people don't know how to receive. I was down here praying the other night and I, I was praying for a, a lady and man, the person of God hit me. It about knocked me down. I felt it not. And I jerked like this, and when I did, she felt it, and her her boyfriend felt it too. And I'm like, whoa, yeah, you know. Yeah. But but they, but but it, it's it, the anointing will bounce back off of me and hit me. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, if they don't receive, and people in the body of Christ, they learn how to receive. Amen. amen. Those two little girls, they they're hungry. Amen. Hey, go keep praying for them. Amen. 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 God's touching these little girls. You watch what I tell you. They're gonna get filled with the Holy Ghost, and they're. I told I told Jeff to the day, I said, I'm gonna have him down here praying over with the adults for too long. Amen. That Amen. one little girl, my next one neighbor's kid came over here. We prayed for her. She was she was she couldn't see when she was born. She was a preemie baby. Didn't her eyes wouldn't develop. And her grandma came over here and knocked on our door. Hey, can you pray for little Lily? Just ask for prayer. I prayed right there by the front door. About two weeks later, she said she can see this Amen. That little girl comes over here. She's what, nine now, something like that, ten? But she come up here the other, the other night, she says, and they were they were singing, they were singing a couple songs, they had a song prepared, and little Lily says, I'm gonna pray tonight. I'm gonna pray with a meal. How do you do that? <laughs> oh. I said, so I said awesome. well, I said, you, she said, you pray to God, right? I said, yeah, but I said, you were God's a father. I said, you said, you can save father, my Father, I ask you to bless the food and, and, and in it in Jesus' name. And she, I said, because whatever you ask for in my name, Jesus says he'll do it. Amen. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to train her too, but then when I got up there to pray, all three of them wanted to come up there. It's like <laughs> a little pack. You know? <laughs> but isn't it cool? To, you know, yeah. that brings yeah. life into the church, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that other little girl, she just as sweet as can be. But that's just God working, trying Amen. to tell you, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm bringing kids in here to be with you. I'm bringing, I, I want to bring more. Amen. Amen. I want to bring more. We have to allow that to happen. That's right. But I'm telling you, there's a revival happening right now. I read two deals on, on, on Facebook. Michelle Babin put it, posted it yesterday, and she put there was a, there was a report, and, and, and it's happening in the colleges, believe it or not. There's, there's several colleges in Ohio, one of them, I don't remember what the other place was, but they had an all-night prayer meeting. Right. It's yeah. starting to break out. Remember what I read you Friday? It's starting to happen. Mm -hmm. It'll happen here if you let it. That's right. If you're hungry enough, it'll happen here, but you've got to stay hungry. you got to want it. you got to cry out for revival. It's not going to happen. It got to pass you up and get somebody else. I don't want to get passed up. I don't know about y'all. Amen. Amen. Receive this from from the Lord this morning. The ironic blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace this morning. And may the word of God govern over you as you honor it and make it ruler over your life. Father God, we just thank you for the word that goes forth this morning that your word never turns back to you void. So, Lord, we don't we don't be run by our conscience, but we ask you to cleanse our conscience from dead works 
to serve the living God this morning. For every person by the sound of my voice, I fly the blood over their, over their conscience that they will walk in the fullness of the Spirit. And I ask all this, Father, for your glory. In Jesus' name, as your people, as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Come give God praise. Hey, continue.